Matheus. Yeah. Thanks to the organizers for the invitation. And it's a pleasure to talk today about group audit and geometry. Uh, it's a joint work with Marcos Alexandrino, Marcelo Nagaki, Ivan Strutner. And let's see some um, motivations of that. The first of one is that if you have proper group points, would you like to linearize them? It's a problem for in some moments. And then who in Matthias give a nice proof that they are linearizable using Riemannian metrics, metrics that are compatible with the group void structures. Essentially, they prove that proper group voids has this kind of metrics. Then the point here is that proper group voids are Riemannian group voids, but they are examples where Riemannian group voids are not proper. Basically, uh, the one simple example is the non-compactly groups. Then, but there's a nice feature about Riemannian group voids is that when you look for the orbed foliation of a Riemannian group void, then it's a, rem oh, sorry, when, when you look for the orbit foliation of a Riemannian group void, its orbit foliation is a Riemannian foliation. And for Riemannian foliations, take closures of the leaves are quite well processed. I mean, if you have a Riemannian foliation and you take the closures of the leaves, it's again a Riemannian foliation. It was conjectured by Molino and proved by Marx Alexandrino and Hadesky, Marco Hadesky. Then it means that if you have a Riemannian structure, it could not be proper it could not be, you have this character of be proper, but somehow you can take the closures, you can take the proper certification of it. Uh, let's see it in the nice simple example. Of, first of all, some goals. These are questions that I put, put, put here to help us to follow the, the talk. Okay. And first, uh, what's an invariant metric for Lie group points? And then what's a Riemannian group point? Second, in the presence of a metric, how far is a group point to be proper? And third question, what's a singular Riemannian foliation? And four, what's a linear autonomy group point of a singular Riemannian foliation? Okay, let's start with a simple example. Uh, isometric action of a, oh, of a Lie group G on a Riemannian manifold and eta is an action set that preserves the metric. G. And if you use a very classical result to understand better these isometric actions is the following. Is a, there is a huge uh, action, it contains almost, it contains all the isometric actions. It's precisely saying that the theorem of Meyerstein root that say, if you have a Riemannian for manifold, the isometry group, I mean, the group of all the feomorphisms that preserves this metric is a Lie group. And the canonical action of the isometry group on M is a proper action. Then if you have a, or action, let's say we have isometric action like that, then you can consider the image of this homomorphism. It's a least subgroup of the isometry group. And you can take the closure. It's a least subgroup. It's a closely group closed group, subgroup of a Lie group, then the Lie group. Then the action of this guy on M is a proper action. What we have seen at level, if you think as group points, that we have a morphism between our action group point on M into this proper group point here. 
And it's not injective because it has a kernel. Let's say kernel. Oh. What, what close is that? Oh, what do they? Uh, Luca, do you know how to close this thing here? So, okay, now it works again. We have the kernel of phi times n. Let's say here again. We have kernel of phi times n inside of gn. Then if you have a isometric action, there's a nice way to cook up a proper action, is that you take the image of it inside the isometry group and take the closures. And it's not proper if you have a, it's not eff effective. But if you have an effective action, then there's a nice way to get a proper action, is that you take the image and take the closure. And you try to see how to extend it for group points and for do that, first remember that a proper group point is a group point where the product between the source and map is a prop source and target is a proper map. And there's a nice characterization of proper group points is the following that uh, a Lie group point is proper if only if the orbits are closed and the isotropies are compact. It tells us that if you have a group point and you have to try a pro proper certification of it, you have to you have to take closures of the orbits and compactify somehow the isotropies. It was precisely what we did in the first example, where there you once of in once we take the closures of orbits and compactify the isotropies by taking the, the closure of the image of the the morphism phi. Then we need precisely what's the environment metric for our group point. It's a parallel of uh, isometric action. Then if I have a manifold with M, if I'm at, yeah, sorry, here, oh, the group point G, And at a metric on M, uh, we'll try to see how to, this is invariant. First, we need to understand, we don't have a global action of G on TM. We don't have something like G acting on TM. It doesn't work, but we have normal, the normal representation that is for an orbit, let's say L on M, we have the, the normal model restriction on L, it's isomorphic to GL acting in the normal L. Then it means that our, our translating vectors that are normal to the to our orbit. Then for our metric B invariant, what we require is that we write again that we have a the normal representation. Then we ask it that for the the these maps to be isometries. I mean here, M 
eta. Because the metric eta induces a metric on the normal of the space. Remember that I didn't root, but the normal of L is the tangent of M restricted to L, quotient by the tangent of L. Okay. Then there's one more thing that we have in mind to try to formulate some problem about how to extend this thing of on isometric action to Lie group was that we have a kernel, we have a thing that are not effective acting on our manifold. And we do that looking for the effect. We can restrict nor, nor normal representation to this isotropy group. It gets a representation of the Lie group on the normal space at X. And you have an homomorphism of it inside of the linear, general linear group of the at the point X, in the normal space at the X. And it has a kernel, and you call it the ineffective part of the GX. An important thing that about this thing that when you are working with, uh, with isometric, isometries, isometries are determined by the, their first jet. What it means, it means if you have a isometry, let's say G of M and to M, and you have a fixed point, and you also have that G, the differential of G at, at X is the identity, then it implies that our isometry is equal to identity on M. Then this condition is a way of get off the things that are not effective when you have isometries or some metric preserved. Okay. Then you can formulate the problem is the following. If you have a groupoid with an invariant metric, is there a homomorphism of our groupoid into a proper groupoid? And I here I put M and it's homomorphism cover covering the identity map, such that the image of this guy is a least subgroup void. And the second one, if you take the closure, it's again a least subgroup void. And the closures of the orbits of your original group void are precisely the orbits of this new one. And there's one thing that, okay, you can maybe not have something that get off all the ineffective part, but at least if you, if you have a kernel, you ask it to the kernel be inside of the things that are not effective. I think for you, you ask for the arrows that do not contribute for the geometry be inside of, or the kernel be inside of these arrows, sorry. Then now I, I will follow the talk with two, two parts. The first part is about uh, Lie group points and singular manipulations. In the next, in the last one, we will be a part group points, uh, Romanian group points. Sorry, the first part is the joint work from Marcelo, from Marcos, Alexandrino, Marcelo, Nagaki, with Ivan, and Ivan, and it's on archive now. You can see. And first, uh, what is a singular Romanian foliation? It's a geometric smooth singular Riemannian fol singular foliation. Why I wrote here geometric smooth singular foliation? Because there is a notion of singular foliation that involves models of vector fields. Here, for us, um, you know, if you have a manifold M and you have a decomposition of M into immersed connected submanifolds. And this move means that for every point, every vector tangent to a leaf, you can extend it to a vector field tangent to all leaves with O and V. <clears throat> then the next step is what means to be uh, singular Riemannian foliation. 
is a geometric smooth single foliation where if you have a geodesk at some point, let's say it's zero, is orthogonal to a leaf with inter with meets, then it's orthogonal to all leaves it meets. It means that I wrote here, or have our leaves L with our foliation, and I have our geodesk, let's say here. Gamma E it's curls orthogonally at one leaf, then all the leaves it meets orthogonally. It's precisely that. It's equivalent to say that our leaves are equidistant uh, subsets of M. Uh, then let's see some examples of that. And one of the our examples is isometric actions. If you have isometric action of a Lie group on a manifold, you remain a manifold, you can set our foliation to be uh, anyone have any question? Uh, if, you, if, if you have, you can interrupt me, or if I write in, in a small cap, then I will try to get better writing. Okay, and then you can set the foliation as that. As the, the, the orbs by the the connected components of the orbits of G. G0 here is the, co the connected component of the identity. And this is gonna be a isometric action. You, the, the basic examples you could have in mind is that if you have a S1 acting on R2, then it's, it's concentric, oh sorry, it's spheres, then your, your orthogonal geodesks are that's like that race. And the second one is an example that I will use in the following is that if you have a vector bundle E with a inner product and a compatible connection over a manifold B, then you can set a foliation where the leaves of E, L E, is equal to the parallel transport of the, the connection nabla of E along paths on paths alpha on B. Then if you put, then you have a foliation here. And if you get E with this foliation nabla and the metrics, the Sasaki metric of vector bundles with the products, then it's a singular Riemannian foliation. And we will see that almost uh, locally, the foliations, singular Riemannian foliations, behave like that. We have slight modifications that, but the, the they are like this parallel transports. Okay. And there is a nice same why, why sorry? That, why is that one singular? Um, for instance, if you look for the allonomy, the zero vector is fixed. The orbs are, are think about the zero and the other guys are not the zero ones. You can have orbs about the allonomy group at the fiber. Yeah, the connection is not flat. Yes, it's the point. It's the connection is not flat. You can have uh, the, the orbs of the allonomy group are orbits of a Lie group on the fiber, then exactly representation on the fiber EB. So, so then this zero, when it parallel transport this zero section, it's a singular leaf. So what are the what are the, the leaves of the foliation then? I mean, if you have a vector, then you parallel transport it. 
along along paths on the base. Then if your connection is not flat, you, your holonomy group has positive dimension, then the orbits, the orbit, for, for instance, if we take the leaf of zero, it's, it's just the section B. And the other orbs ha have large dimension because of the holonomy group. Oh, I see. It's like uh, you, uh, you can have like a yeah. structure to the holonomy group, and then you take those kind of reduction of the different reductions of structure. Yes. Sorry for maybe I should mention that. Okay. Uh, and there's a nice a semi local description can you, of. Sorry, but yes, Rui. Can you also recall for us what is this Sasaki metric that you were talking about? Yes. And this Sasaki metric here, it's the, you can identify the tangent of EB as E. Oh, sorry. Maybe. Um, then you choose a match on M and on B. Uh, here, there's something. Okay, there are two connected projections, one of then on, on B. And this is the projection of the differential of, let's say P. Then on this part, you put your inner product here. And on B, you put N metric. It's the Sasaki metric. I mean, it's linear. Okay, this uh, splitting is the splitting given by W. No. Yeah, yeah. That will give you a splitting of the tangent to E by horizontal yes. space. This is the yeah. And yes. your NABLA your is supposed to preserve the, met, the fiberwise metric. Yes, yeah, yeah, they are compatible. I, uh, maybe I mentioned that low, slowly, but they are compatible. Yes. By the way, you may want to connect your, your iPad or whatever, your pad to the... To, because it's... Battery. Your battery is it's going... Yes. Oh, where is now? Where this thing are when they, we need the, the, okay. It's okay. Ah, it's working. But it, it's, it's exactly that way. Is there a compatibility between the connection and the, and Ada? Yes, in the NABLA? Uh, NABLA and Ada. Mm, not a PR. We just just need to require uh, compatibility between the this the inner product, the the metric on the fibers. Okay, and everyone is fine. And some more, more questions or remarks are welcome. <laughs> and thank you, Francis, and thanks, Rui. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Uh, Adim Reutenberg here. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, yeah, just uh, put it in the chat. Is there any relation between uh, uh, the fiber metric uh, and the base metric, the one on B? Or are they completely unrelated? We can talk later, but at this point, we don't need compatibility between them. Okay, no, that, 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 yeah, that's, that's, that's all I wanted to know. So there's just a completely arbitrary Riemannian metric on B plus a fiber-wise metric on E. Yeah, on this example, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay, okay, fine, thank you. Welcome. 
and then there is uh, this there's a nice simple model description for singular manifolations that are from Alexandrino Hadesk. And you also can see the thesis of Marcel Nagaki. For more details about that, then we will see now some ingredients of the same local model for a singular manifolation. The first, if you have a singular manifolation and a leaf of L, we can take the closure of this leaf. And it, it, in many cases, we don't have, a, again, a smooth manifold, but in the remaining case, we have, again, a smooth manifold. Yes, exactly. Oh, sorry, I didn't see what Francis wrote here. Uh, yes, yeah. actually. Yes. Okay, then the next step is you when you restrict our foliation to this closure, it's a foliation given by dense leaves. It's the pieces of our local model. And we have the normal bundle of this manifold B. And then we can identify a turbular neighborhood of F with E. And using homotopies, we create a singular manifoliation on E now with the Sazak metric, using the metric on the, on the base. Now, uh, then there is a nice uh, geometric description of this foliation is the following because now it's from uh, our vector bundle has a symmetric eta, we can restrict to, it, to E, and now it also has a connection, let's say, in Abla Tau. Nabla Tau is a partial connection. FB, you can only derivative along the leaves of of our foliation. It means that it has this this guy here. And also it compatibles. It's it's I mean, the, this connection Nablan is part of the local model. You need to construct then. I just is keeping the technical part of it, but it's compatible. Uh, Can you recall what is FB? Yes. Um, if we have our foliation F on M, then you have the closure of a leaf that's B, you can restrict to B, that's the closure of a leaf. Now you use, I you denote this by FB. Then you try to understand the foliation around this B. Then I, we took a turbulent neighborhood around this B and pull back the foliation for the vector bundle and you try to work on this foliation, the vector bundle now. Boom. We, can, can I ask you, yeah. if this foliation was regular, this would be like the bot connection? Yes, it's the, the foliation, thank you, Rui. It, thank you again, it, because if the foliation is regular, this Nabla Tau is precisely the bot connection. Thanks, Rui. Uh, the Nabla Tau is a extension, on, we can think of a, general uh, bot, bot connection exactly, is exactly that. Uh, okay, then what we can do with, with this connection is that if you restrict, you have now an orphalation E, you can restrict it for a fiber B and then what you can see is that our original foliation, 
Fe is precisely the parallel transport of leaves L, let's say L here, where L is a leaf of the restriction. I will try, I will draw it in try to understand. I mean that we have our fibers, you have the orbits when we restrict to this fiber. Then the leaves of this foliation E are precisely trans parallel transport of the, these leaves. The circle here is the leaf L when restricted to a fiber, let's say EB. Uh, okay, and one other thing is that this foliation, this vector bundle could be would mean that if we have a vector field uh, to a linear singular manifold, I'll be precise that now. If I have a vector field here, we can produce a vector field XL that you generate or linear linearization. And this vector field is linear in the, sin in the sense that the flow of this guy is a, uh, she's L, is a lin is linear homomorphism. It's a homomorphism of vector bundles. The flow is linear. Okay. And then when you collect all these guys, it generate FL. But also there is a, another Nice description for this linearization foliation. Linearized, oh, this linear foliation, sorry. Is that if you, at some point, take KO, uh, KB, let's say zero, the maximal subgroup of the isometry group that fixed the leaves of the foliation restricted to EB. Foliation on E restricted to EB. Then what happens is that the, the linear foliation is precisely the, the, the movements where you rotate on the fiber with this group and then take the parallel transport. I will write here. The, the leaves, the linearized leaves are precisely the parallel transport of the orbits of here. It's in, if, you can, if you can draw it, let's draw here. I'm saying that you, this, is the, this circle here is the orbit of KO, that is the linear part. Then you can parallel transport it you have this solution here of the other fibers. I mean, the linear part is precise. Fiber-wise, the linear foliation is given by a Lie group action. It's not true in general because there are singular remaining foliations that are not given by the action of Lie groups. I mean, there are singular remaining foliations on Euclidean space that are not of this type. Then when you get the linearization, they're not covering. It means that not any remaining foliation e equals to its linear linearization. I mean, not every remaining foliation is linearized in the sense that they are equal. I mean, I will wrote here. It's FL is not in general equals to FL. It's in, in, you can have this type, type of linearization. Isomorphism. Yes? Is the, 
FL? Is that the foliation that you get from the partial bot connection? It contains that because this group B, this group KB contain the holonomy. It's a, a little, it could, could be large than the holonomy group, quite large. But yeah, you, your intuition is in the right direction. This group contains the holonomy. In fact, it's what we are using in the next slide. Um, but then, yes. Um, but the foliation that you obtain from the partial bot connection, that also is not the same thing as FE. Is that right? Or it is the same thing as FE? When take the just the points? No, no, it's not the same thing. Because there we are just just it parallel transport the, the points. Here you, you transport something large. It's it's a extension of that example. There you only parallel transport points. Here you parallel transport also a foliation. We have a singular manifolation of fiber, then you parallel transport it. Yeah. How, how many time I have? I mean, we're flexible with time. Uh, it, it should be until half past five, but we're flexible. So try to wrap it okay. up like okay. reasonably. Then we inter time. Yes. And if, if you have an extra question, please ask me. It, then we, if you are flexible on time, feel free to questions. Thanks, Francis. Again. Uh, then we discussed now, we have this model of the, of the linear part. What should be a groupoid or holonomy groupoid for this foliation FL is what you're going to do now. Oh, sorry. Uh, first point that uh, you can show that these groups, this is symmetries of the foliation of the fibers isomorphic for every part of B on B. Then they form a Lie group bundle. And this Lie group bundle contains the holonomy of the bot partial connection. Let's say that. With that, we can construct a distribution, take the distribution of this connection, horizontal distribution, plus our the Lie algebra bundle of the K, let's say K here, oh, uh, mm, Then it's inside of the involutive distribution inside of T O A. It's the no orthogonal frame bundle of E with respect to the metric. It's an involutive distribution. And with that, we can lift our foliation to a foliation on on O U that's regular regular foliation can show that the lifting is a regular foliation on O E and now I wrote here in the different color for this F tilde because it's regular we have allonomy group point. We have allonomy of F tilde over OE. And then we can show that ON acts on this foliation, this allonomy group point by 
automorphism, I mean, I can take the quotients of O n here and O n here. Here is, you get B and this guy acts on E. You have a presentation. It's looked very like a linear model of a groupoid. I mean, you have a groupoid act on the normal bundle. Remember, this guy here is the normal bundle of B. Then we set a linear holonomy of FL, exactly this representation groupoid. I wrote in, in red here that the holonomy of FL for us, by definition, the action of this guy. Sorry. Uh, model ON acting on E. It's precisely one. Some question? Okay. Then, our theorem is that this is a Lie groupoid with orbit foliation FL. I mean, this guy with the constructor is precisely the the guy with a guy with the orbits are the foli the linearized foliation. It's why we call it the linear holonomy group point. But now you you, you have a singular remaining foliation and you have a group point. You can try to take the closure of this group point because I start my talk talking about taking closure of group points. And you see how to take closure of this group point. First, uh, important to recall that for regular human foliations, if you have a regular human foliation, you have the holonomy groupoid, and you have an injective uh, map inside of the, let's say, this O is the orthogonal groupoid, well, orthogonal frame groupoid of NB uh, over M. It's not the orthogonal frame bond now. It's that take the first jet of the holonomy transformation. If it's Riemannian, let's say phi, phi, if if at the if f is Riemannian, then phi is injective. Because the the linear part completely determines because these are isometries. In the first remark that I did about effect, then we can take the closure inside of this proper groupoid of the frame bundles, and what happens is that this guy is going to be a proper groupoid, smooth proper groupoid, uh, with orbital foliation is exactly the closure of the leaves. Here uh, I denote like that, but just write, just wrote again, right. Oh, in the notation of the theorem, O F is exactly O F and take closure. Uh, it's a quite a well-known result, but they are not precisely reference for that. One of them, you can think about Salen, Eliane Salen, that who proves this result for uh, pseudo groups, or for you can think uh, the, the tau case. But even, but we can do that uh, again with our, in our paper for sake of reference. And using this, we can prove something more that remember we have the foliation F tilde inside of OA that's regular. Then we can, in fact, show that it's Riemannian. Then we play the same game now, but with the uh, groupoid that represents the, its closure. I mean, I will wrote a quite fast here, but we can play the same game and get mod out O n over B 
acting on E. Oh, sorry, it's a key here is O E mod out O N. It's B. Here is because it implies that there is the this guy. Uh, there is a small tilde here. It's Riemannian. We can take the closure. It's uh, again a proper groupoid. We can reduce this groupoid and get a representation on on our vector bundle. Then we can prove the following: that the let's say that this guy here now, how of F L closure B to us the representation group point of this guy here. O N acting on E. Here is a closure. Then uh, it's a Lie group point with orbit foliation is the closure of the linearized foliation. Moreover, it's a dense subgroupoid of the the original groupoid is a dense subgroupoid of this new groupoid. It's nice because when you look, at, when you go back for a problem, its guy is, is injected. It means that you don't doesn't have a kernel. We solve our problem for these guys. It it's have it has trivial kernel and all the other properties that we want. Uh, okay. The next part is about the properties of remaining group points, but again, look at how much time I try to get out this. So usually we stop at half past five, uh, but I mean, we're flexible with time. So if you need to take 10, 15 more minutes, that's okay. Okay, uh. I will try to, to finish in, in 10 minutes. Sorry about get your no, time. So we are not and, even over time yet. That's yeah, problem. someone. Paulo, he has plenty of time. What did you say, Savi Louis? Half past time in Sao Paulo, he has plenty of time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Right, right. And if someone has some questions about singular manipulation at this part, at this point of the talk, can can talk about now. Okay, if you want to, no, no one have questions. I'll follow for the second part. The second part is a work in progress. With, with, uh, we, we try to see, in, inspired by the example of singular manipulations and the other examples, we, we are trying to see at least locally how far a many groupoid could be of, of from a proper groupoid, at least locally. Let's see some, some points here. First, what's a remaining groupoid? Is a groupoid if uh, metric on the composable arrows and such that this metric it can be projectable to M and this SC3 invariance means that if we have a two composable arrows, let's say H, G, then you have G, then you can S3 act here by commutating the points in the, on the north triangle, the corners. Okay, then uh, one important thing that if you don't don't care about this metric, you want just keep this data with us. This map took it. Sorry, can I ask, what does it mean for it to be fibered with respect to a map? Okay, uh, it means that when you look for, you have a submersion, if you have a metric here, you can take the orthogonal product. The, let's say a, for a general submersion, okay? You have your fiber, and you have our orthogonal vector here, M, let's say V, in a V prime. And both, let's say this map, map here is F, and let's say that they have the same projection, then it implies that they have the same norm. Does that mean that they are orthogonal? The G inherits a metric then? 
Yes. She has a match. Yes. Uh, Ita Ipo. Exactly that. Okay. Uh, but then important things about this metric that they induce this metric on G and on M. On the metric on M it shows that the orbit foliation is a Riemannian foliation. In another point that the metric on M is G invariant, as we said in the first in the, the first page slides, means that when you take the normal representation of vectors orthogonal to the your orbit, it preserves the norms, like for submersions. The same thing here uh, now happens for, beside we have fibers, we have orbits, the same game. Uh, then examples are, we can do this machinery for zomatic actions, you can construct construct this type of metrics and, and also for regular Riemannian foliations. I have this type of metrics. You can for regular Riemannian foliations, if you have a metric that's compatible with your foliation, we can extend it to a two metric. If you have a zoometric action, you have to deform it. It's not precisely extension, but we have the same values on the normal direction to the orbits. But the important thing about this metric is in the linearization problem is that proper groupoids admits this type of metrics. And in why they are interested in that is because they are trying to, my tears and we are trying to prove, are pro proofing a uh, linearization theorem where, okay, the local model, just I quite remember again that you have a now a a closed, saturated, closed, saturated submanifold. Not not anymore, just an orbit, orbit, but a closed, saturated submanifold. Then you can have the same game as before. You can restrict. You have the normal model that is the around B. It is morphed to the presentation of G on B. Look at that. For our theorem on singular Riemannian foliations, much of effort was about to find this guy. It's precisely what we do when you take this quotient of F tilde allonomy group, is find this guy, G is G restricted to B. But when we are in a group, we already have this guy. This is the point. If you try to, to look for a group while you're presenting the linear part of a alone, alone, uh, singular Riemannian foliation, what we did is precisely find the, the guy who, who acts on the normal. This is what happens when we take this partial connection and lift and take quotients. It's about to find this guy. Okay, and then the linearization is precisely when you have um, your groupoid restricted to some, to some open around uh, our, our saturated submanifold B and it's isomorphic to restrict the action E and B to a V, it's a isomorphism. Okay, then um, what's in, there's a term of who in Matthias, this is where many group points linearized but are all closed saturated pseudo manifolds. There's a point here that I didn't mention that it's not exactly linearized, but it's quite weak linearized. I mean, this neighborhood should be smaller, but for the proper case, it's linearizable. But let's assume this version for now. And now that we are, have this type of linearization theorem, we can work on local models. If you want to take closures, 
for something that is linearizable, just look for the local model. And for the local model, we have a Riemannian groupoid. We can take the closure of a leaf or an orbit. It's again a saturated submanifold. You can restrict our groupoid now. It's not a regular foliation, it's a regular groupoid. Uh, and then we have the, the homomorphism. Oh, it's, it's guy comes from the fact that we have an action, a representation of GB on NB gives us this homomorphism here. We can show that this guy has constant rank and its image is a least subgroupoid. We can show that. And, but what's the problem that we are working, it's kind of hard, is to show that the closure of this guy is a least subgroupoid of O N of B. We didn't eat for any case, I mean the general case of a closure of the leaf, but if you are with a closed orbit, we have Arterian. I mean, if you have a closed orbit, then the image of this guy, I will write again the, the homomorphism here, let's say GL uh, for, because we have the metric, then the orthogonal, the normal representation is inside of the orthogonal frame bundle groupoid of NB. Let's say this is the phi. If the, the orbit is closed, then we can show that this guy is a Lie group, groupoid and the, the closure is a little subgroupoid and it has the, the same orbits of the, the guy we started. Then we solve the problem for this case. And I mean, we have, we have find the, uh, as the beginning exactly in B phi to a proper one, this guy here and B. One thing that should help for this question on, on, on red is that if we, a general problem when the, uh, a closed subgroupoid of a proper groupoid, because this guy here is a proper groupoid. When a closed subgroupoid of a proper groupoid is a least subgroupoid, it's a general problem that could, could solve for us the, our particular case. But it's, it's quite hard and it's not true in general. There are simple examples where you can find subgroupoids with the closure are not the subgroupoids. Proper groupoids with sub subgroupoids, close the sub subgroupoids that are not Li. But what are the conditions to it happens? Then I I hope I didn't get so fast in the end. And thanks for the, your attention. Sorry by the bright speed on the, the, the end. Thanks, guys. <laughs>